Welcome church family. We are so glad to get together one more time. Feel God's presence, encounter him today. Let's all come in, we're ready to worship. Jesus, we adore you today. God, we look with expectancy to your return, Jesus. We love you, God. Did you feel the mountains tremble? Did you hear the oceans roar? When the people rose to sing of Jesus Christ, the risen one. Feel the people tremble. Did you hear the singers roar? When the lost began to sing of Jesus Christ, the saving one. Then you can see that God's a moving, a mighty river.
Jesus, thank you, God. Thank you, God, that our identity is all in you, Jesus. It's wrapped up in you, God. And silent before you, in all of your wonders and love, beholding your Thank you for all that you've done. I'm humbled and happy. God, that you love me this way. To carry my cross and my shame. Thank you for all that you've done.
You know, as we're just worshiping during these songs, and uh, does it ever take you back to where you started in this uh, walk with the Lord, this relationship, whenever you sing stuff like this? I, uh, as we were in worship, I was just thinking, I wonder if Peter never forgot that moment that Jesus showed up and said, throw your net on the other side. Even after Jesus had ascended and was back in heaven, did Peter remember whenever he was a fisherman and the Lord came to him and said, I want to teach you how to fish for a different fish. I'm going to teach you to be a fisher of men. And I, I wonder if, uh, if Paul ever forgot the moment he was on that horse on the road to Damascus when he encountered Christ for the first time and he was never the same again. See, because if we remember of what we have been purchased out of, what we have been redeemed from, because some of y'all that are in here, when the Lord found you, you were addicted to something and the Lord set you free. Some of you, whenever the Lord found you, your marriages were in shambles and the Lord healed your heart. Some of you, when the Lord found you and whenever you came to the Lord, you were in a desperate place. And whenever he found you, he saved you, he healed you, and he placed your feet on solid ground. Doesn't mean it's been perfect since then, but he's walked with you every step. And so whenever we come into a time where we're, we're singing words like these, without feeling some kind of guilt or condemnation about your past, instead of feeling some kind of worship and celebration coming out because of what God has done and is doing in your lives, we can sing hallelujah. As I just began to hear, there was a woman that began to cry out hallelujah. It reminded me of the story of the woman who was washing Jesus' feet with her tears and, and sometimes people around her, they, they couldn't understand why she was doing that, but because they didn't know what she had come out of. And Jesus even says, those who have been forgiven much, they love much. And that's what worship is. It's just an expression of our love for the one who has done so much for us, that we were the ones to die, but he took it, that we were the ones to be punished, but he took it. We were the ones to experience, but he took it. And so as we sing this, let's not sing from a, from a distant place, but sing from that place of saying, God, I know who I was, and I still know who I am, but I also know who you are in all that you're doing. And so, Lord, we sing to you, hallelujah. Hallelujah, God, we sing to you. Hallelujah.
so we worship you alone and forever you will be the lamb upon the throne and I gladly bow Sing that again. Forever he will be. We love you, Jesus. The Lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow my knee and worship you alone. Sing that one more time. Sometimes. 
more time. You are worthy of it all. Jesus, your love. Oh, your love, it captivates us, Jesus. It overwhelms us, God. As I was just sitting in worship, God, I just caught a glimpse of the blaze that's in your eyes, the passion that burns in your eyes for your bride. Oh, God, how you love us. Thank you for loving us, Jesus. It's just, it amazes me so much, God, that you being a holy, mighty, awesome God that you are, God, that you being so pure would offer up a sacrifice for us. Like, that just blows my mind, God. You being who you are would willingly give up your one and only son for us, for me. Thank you, Jesus, for laying your life down for each one of us that are here today. That we may have new life in you, Jesus. God, I thank you for breaking every chain that bounds us, Father God, that binds us up, God. Freeing us, Father God, from the shame, the guilt, Father God, that we brought upon our own lives through sin, Jesus. We thank you that your love is greater, God. Your love is greater, Jesus. So that is why we worship you in this place, God from the love, God, that you've filled our hearts with, God. We return with worship to you, our King, our Lord, our Savior. Because, God, you are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. Hallelujah, God, you are worthy. We are worthy, Jesus. Our praise is being an aroma of a sweet smelling fragrance to your throne, God. We thank you, God, for this sweet, intimate time, God. We know that this is what you long for to be with your bride in the secret place, coming away with her. Revealing how much you truly love your bride. May we constantly fix our gaze to you, Jesus, as you lay a hold of your gaze upon us. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for this time, Jesus. May that not this let this let this be not the only time, God, that we come to this place, God. But let it overflow into our daily lives, Jesus. Fan the flames of our hearts, God. That we burn with a passion for your name, Jesus. That we burn with a desire to glorify your name in everything we say, in everything we do, God. Let it be the glory to you, Jesus. Let it honor you, God. We reverence you in this place, Jesus. And as we move forward, God, in the service, God, I just pray that you continue 
to have your way, God. Let your word go forth in power and might, Father God, as a mighty sword that goes forth and, and slices and divides, Father God, that which is the spirit, that which is the flesh, Jesus. Let your spirit go forth, Father God, and ready our hearts to receive of your word, God, that your seed of your word may fall upon good ground, God. Stir up our hearts, God. Break up that fallow ground, Father God, any hard places in our hearts that won't be receptive of your word, God. Break it up right now, Jesus, that your word will have its way in our hearts and become a part of who we are, Jesus. God, we thank you. We praise you. Now and forevermore, Jesus. Be glorified. Amen. Okay, this week, Monday through Thursday, July 19th through the 22nd, the kids that are registered will be headed out to Family Farm. The drop-off time at the church is 7.45, and the pickup time is 5 o'clock here at the church. Also this week, our youth will be headed out to Camp Story, Monday through Friday, July 19th through the 23rd. You can check with our youth pastor, BJ, for drop-off and pickup times. This Wednesday at 6 o'clock, we'll be having home groups. If you're not already plugged in with a home group, contact the office and we'll get you connected. For the month of July, our Oasis needs are packaged rice, canned vegetables, hamburger helper, instant potatoes, and Pop-Tarts. If you will, just drop off any of those donations in our bin on the back porch. Be sure to pick up a July prayer card out on the back porch after service to be praying over the needs of those in our congregation. Thanks again for listening to this week's announcements. And an awesome good morning. How many of y'all had a hard time getting up this morning with that beautiful rain we had coming down? That was, that was trying to serenade us back to sleep is what it was trying to do. I, uh, Lindsay, myself, and the family, we got to go to a, a family reunion over the weekend. We got back about midnight last night and uh, try to get just enough sleep to be able to still be uh, awake today with you guys. Hope you all are having a beautiful Sunday. I'd um, like to welcome you to worshiping with us today and uh, being able to, to study the Word together. Appreciate all of you all being a part of the family. You know, something that's, uh, you know, I, I guess you could say I cut my teeth on um, worship and then worship leading and it's really the roots that I go back to whenever it comes to uh, to whenever standing on this platform. See Charlie sitting there all the way back in the day whenever he had his trumpet out and I had my trombone and we were up here just blasting it. Some of y'all might have been with us at that time. And uh, um, Worship is where it all starts and where I want to dwell is in consistently worshiping the Lord. Whether it's through a song or just the way we live, let us always be in worship. And where does worship come from? It comes from a place of love. Whenever you're in love, worship just comes out of our heart. And so, uh, you know, there was a time as Susanna's leading us in, and I know there's no words going on. It's just singing, oh, 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 oh to the Lord. But it's, it, you don't have to have words. It comes from your spirit that just says, God, I love you so much, and I love being in your presence. And uh, so whenever we enter into those times, it's not a, a time to wait until we get back to the words or to a song that we know. That's a time to just dive in and begin to express to him your great love. Let it be, a, let it be an original song. Um, let me ask you this. Husbands, would your wives prefer something that you wrote from your heart or something that another man wrote for his woman? She would love to hear from your heart and the things that you feel about her and let it be personal. And so there's no, no problems with roses or red, violets or blue. But whenever you can come back with something to, that's specific, that's the same thing in worship. Sometimes we're singing what somebody else wrote, but then there's times that we can sing something that's from our heart that just says, oh, my God, I remember where I was at the day you found me. And I'm so thankful for all that you are and all that you've done and how you've loved me and forgiven me and redeemed me. And all of a sudden, this worship love song 
comes out, and it's a sweet moment. So I just, I wa- before we dive into the Word, I wanted to give that exhortation of worship and where it comes from as we begin to sing these things. A um, couple things, and then let's dive into the Word. One is my heart every Wednesday night, whenever we go out to Family Park, is just like overflowing from what I've been seeing and, and um, experiencing with you guys that have been able to come and uh, the people who that we've been able to speak to and minister to, this has been a real exciting thing for me personally. And then seeing what's happening in you guys as you're participating in it as well. Uh, the families who are, who are engaging with us and that we're getting to create relationship with, uh, to learn the stories about uh, a lady who was there and she's been battling cancer. And right about the time, same time she finds out that she has cancer, she goes into marriage problems and their family was falling apart. And now she's watching as God restores her family and, and, and she's believing God to completely restore her health and we're getting to be a part of that journey with her where we would have never have met her if we had not uh, walked uh, over into family park that one day and and the others that we've been able to engage with and watching the kids that have become regular coming out there and uh, and playing games with us but getting the gospel message every time they show up to play games y'all this has been a beautiful aspect of this ministry that has produced an amazing amount of fruit And uh, for those of you that might be even sitting here today because of a connection that you made with us at uh, at Family Park, we welcome you as part of this family. Uh, Not just a church, not just a service, but a family. You have people here who love you and care for you, and we're so thankful that you've chosen to join lives with us. Um, That also transitioning the staff this last week we were talking about well what's next because there's going to come a time that uh, it's not going to be conducive for us to go down to family park and kids are going to be back in school and uh, seasons are going to change and where this whole thing started was from this thought of where are the people at that need to hear this message and need to be loved on by Christ and his church. And, uh, and so we begin to, as a staff on Thursday, think about where are the people at in the fall? Where is it that they are gathering in large numbers? Where can we find people that we can love on and minister to? And we begin to think about Friday night football, and, and, and we begin to uh, propose this idea. And I'm just casting a little vision, but I'm going to give more details that we're going to begin to start through our home group ministries and adopt a school program. And through those, uh, through those adopt a school home groups, those schools are going to be places where y'all begin to reach out and to connect with people and and maybe it means getting some school supplies in a backpack and taking up or or maybe some some uh, food to help out with something but we're going to begin to throw some ideas of ways that we can go and connect where the people are at and make those relationships to be very intentional of how we reach this community uh, for the gospel by loving them and showing them how to love the father and I'm excited about what the next step is once the uh, we transition out of going to the parks every other Wednesday and we start getting into this new ministry. So there it is, just uh, given the first uh, glimpse of what it is that we're going to be moving into, and we'll be giving you more details as they come in this uh, this adopt-a-school ministry that we're about to do. With that, would everybody stand and let's read the word together. The book of John, chapter 15. Let's read together. The word says this, I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it so that he may bear more fruit. Verse 2. Oh, that was verse 2. Sorry, y'all may be seated. (laughs) Saw that verse 1 at the top and just thought we were going to keep on reading. Y'all, we're going to come back to that verse if you want to put a piece of paper there so that you don't lose your place on it. But John chapter 15, we're going to spend a little more time in today. Um, he says that I am the vine, my father is the vine dresser. And there's not a lot of us probably that have had uh, vines that we wanted to dress. We probably haven't had a lot of grape vineyards that we've had to work in. But those who have, have been in grape vineyards or have some kind of vine that you're trying to get to produce, you have the vine that grows up. You have the branches that go out. But somebody needs to come along, one, to harvest the grapes, but then there's also these, some pruning that has to be done so that it stays healthy. And we're, we're going to talk about what that looks like here in just a little bit. Um, 
But I want to ask you this question. I was thinking on this over the last few weeks in um, this, this question here. What are some things that you would like to have more of, more of in life? Some things that you would like to have more of in life. All right, so we're sitting in church. We need to go ahead and get the Sunday school answer out there. We want more Jesus, right? We want more of God. We need more of him in our life. That is the ultimate number one thing that we need to continue to ask. God, I want more of you, and I want you to have more of me. But what are some other things also that you can think of that you might be wanting more of? Anybody in here could use a little more money? Or are y'all, y'all about maxed out? You're good. All right. I know for me, I would love to have some more pie in my life. Anybody feel that? Some pecan pie? Mm. Anybody else, y'all feel a peanut butter pie? I mean, I could run through. I've done this before, and it took me to a place. Some strawberry pie? I better. I don't need to go back down this road, but you think about it. There are some things, some, how many of y'all would like to be able to have some more calories but some less pounds at the same time? When the, that, that might be what heaven's kind of like. How many of y'all like to have a little more joy? How many of y'all like to have a lot more joy? You ever just walked into a place and you were heavy? You ever just walked into a place and you could feel the atmosphere felt heavy and you're like, ooh, this needs a good dose of joy in this place. You ever walked in your house and you could just sense the heaviness and you're like, oh, I want my house to be happy. Any of y'all need some more peace? Tired of being stressed and anxious and frustrated on the inside? And how that manifests itself on the outside. Any of y'all, you would like to have some more love in your life. Loving relationship with the spouse. Loving relationship with your kids. Loving relationship with each other. How many of y'all would like to, the question was, how many, how many of you, that there are some things that you would like to have more of in life? Is there any of y'all that would like to have more hair? <laughs> Judy, why are you pointing at Jim right now? Oh, I saw that and I called you out, yeah. That's so why whenever I was writing these notes out and I was thinking about yesterday at Family Reunion, we got about 70 of us out there to take pictures. We are in Tennessee, and uh, the guy that was trying to get us all organized, he's like, hey, y'all, let's hurry up. The sun's uh, going to burn Matt's head. And I called me out in front of 70 of my family members. That's not, that's, come on, I needed more love at that point. So uh, thank you, Lynn. Uh, so those are some things that we might want more of. What are some things that you might want less of in life? I, uh, I would like to have less problems. Is that, does anybody feel that? Want to have a few less problems in life. Uh, you know, I've already mentioned this, but some of us, most of us, would like to have a, a few less pounds on us. Um, but that's the problem whenever you want more pie, but you want less pounds and it just doesn't work. How many of y'all like to have less failures in life? Wouldn't it be nice to just go from success story to success story without any failures or struggles in between? Well, there's some things that we sure would like to have less of. How many of y'all like to have less negativity in your life? First step, turn off the news. You will cut out a lot of your negativity in life. Anybody, any of you like to have less conflict in your life? Y'all ever get tired of just being in conflict with others, which causes conflict inside you, which then causes you to have be in conflict with even more others. There's just, there's some things that we would love to have more of, and there's some things that we'd love to have less of. And, and Jesus comes in and he tells this, that, you know, you, all of you are wanting to produce more. All of you are wanting to have life, and all of you are wanting to do these things. But there's this thing called the vine, and you are the branches in, these thing, in this vine. And if you want to produce more, there's some secrets to it. And, and, and part of the secrets to it is, one, you've got to be staying in the vine so you're getting the life that you need. But there's also some times that you need some less of things. There's some times in life where you need some things to be cut away so that you can be healthy. And, and nobody enjoys those times and those seasons of the, of the cutting away and the removing. You know, and I just I want to talk today about, about the pruning times. The, the title of today's message is Less is More. Less is more. Based out of this scripture, God says that if you want to be the greatest, what do you got to do first? 
you got to become the least. It's all throughout Jesus' teachings that we're wanting more and more and more and more and more. And Jesus says, that's awesome, but there's a process to the getting of more. 